From its founding in 2014, NIO had and still continues to be referred to as a Chinese electric car company. While not inaccurate, they describe themselves as a company in the premium smart electric vehicle market. The company has a loyal following due to its strategy of forming an ecosystem that is based around, but goes beyond just their electric vehicles. By outlining their broader strategy and highlighting those offerings beyond just electric vehicles, we can better understand why NEO isn't simply an electric car company and why their customer base is loyal. Please have a seat and let's go for a spin around the NEOverse, highlighting diverse topics from vehicles and battery manufacturing infrastructure to product support and initiatives to foster tribe like community belonging among customers. The populations of China, Norway, Germany, the Netherlands, Denmark, and Sweden are the ones that have access to NEO, with more global expansion planned for the future. Interestingly, customers are often called users to imply people maintain a relationship with NEO beyond the point of purchasing a car and continue interacting in a context that involves other products and services that relate to electric vehicles. The electric vehicles or EVs they have range from SUVs to sedans and executive flagship models all of which are compatible with different battery packs that are classified from standard to long-range to ultra-long-range. Within minutes, a battery can be swapped for another one at power swap stations. Quite convenient for cases where even fast charging won't match up. During each swap, a battery health assessment and electric drive system are performed to ensure optimal condition of the vehicle. Then, as battery technology inevitably evolves, upgrades can be performed with ease. This is made possible due to what the company refers to as proprietary battery swapping technologies. A single power swap station can service several hundred vehicles per day with service capacity expected to increase over time with improvements to efficiency. Expansions are also planned for certain areas that will be selected based on a broader strategy to ensure sufficient capacity and the experience for the growing user base is optimized. Power swap stations have components such as NVIDIA Drive, Orin X chips, and LiDARs that enable fully automatic swapping in various environments, as well as compatibility with multiple vehicle brands, demonstrating how power infrastructure is just as important as the vehicles themselves in the EV industry. If you would like to learn more about LiDAR, check out last week's video on Luminar Technologies and their contributions to the automotive industry. Battery swapping capabilities are complemented by battery as a service, BAS for short. It is a business model where the battery price is separated from the purchase price of a vehicle. There is a purchase price for the vehicle itself, and another one just for the battery. With this approach, NEO claims users benefit from lower vehicle purchase prices, flexible battery upgrade options, and assurance of battery performance. Though this process isn't that straightforward. That is because the model works by NEO first selling a battery to the battery asset company. Then a user subscribes for the usage of the battery from the battery asset company. If users opt to purchase a NEO vehicle and subscribe for the battery under BAS, they get a deduction off the original vehicle purchase price while paying a monthly subscription fee for the battery. For an extra fee, NEO users can select from battery upgrade options. The battery asset company was jointly started by CATL, Hubei Science Technology Investment Group, and a subsidiary of Guotai Junan International Holdings Limited, along with NEO itself, and later with contributions from subsequent investors in 2020. Although NEO has a stake in the battery asset company, it doesn't hold the majority of equity interests. That's why reliance on the battery asset company to provide battery as a service to users has been noted as a risk if there were to be any interruptions to their operations. In terms of powering batteries, we need to talk about Power Cloud, which all charging options are connected to. Power Cloud synchronizes the power consumption information of users and the NEO power network. It also suggests the appropriate services according to user location and power consumption patterns. Users can then check the availability of charging and swapping resources on NEO's own network, but also have access to a network of public chargers and real-time information about them through the Power Map on the NEO app. To complement that, there's one click for Power Valet service where NEO picks up, charges, and returns customers' EVs. If a customer's home is suitable, there is the option for installation of Power Home, which has the option of standard and high-speed home chargers. Alternatively, the new app can be used to locate power chargers in parking and other easy-to-access places. To meet specific demand that may arise in certain areas, destination chargers are deployed in locations such as tourist attractions, shopping malls, and office buildings. In total, there are well over 20,000 of these charger types in operation with more planned. Power Map on the NEO app further increases charging options for users by providing information on close to 1.5 million publicly accessible charging piles globally. 
to improve the user experience even more, there are plans to increase the number of chargers with data synchronized to Neo's Power Cloud. To bring all those capabilities together, one click for power provides valet service through the Neo app. Users can have their vehicle picked up at their designated parking location for valet charging, battery swapping, or power mobile, thereby providing users with the most convenient and appropriate power solution based on their travel habits and cloud-based smart scheduling. Then you may remember the term ADAS, meaning Advanced Driver Assistance Systems, discussed in previous videos, such as the ones about the companies Gauzy and Luminar. Well, NEO also has their own ADAS called NAD, which stands for NEO Assisted and Intelligent Driving, or NAD. It is comprised of proprietary perception algorithms, localization, control strategy, and platform software, as well as their Atom Computing Platform and Aquila Sensing System. Digital systems are a significant part of the driving experience and are run by NEO's all-domain vehicle operating system called SkyOS. It handles everything from intelligent driving and vehicle control to digital cockpit and connectivity along with over-the-air OTA updates and security. OTA updates are also sent to update the firmware of their proprietary electric powertrains designed specifically for NEO's vehicles. Indeed, there is a particular emphasis on software-driven technologies and fast iteration as part of overall vehicle engineering and design. Efforts have also been made to increase vehicle production efficiency, such as with the integration of more die casting to minimize the number of vehicle parts, reduce process steps, shorten production line length, and enhance overall efficiency. Automation is also introduced wherever possible. Advantageously, the majority of their supply base is located in China, allowing them to acquire supplies more quickly and at reduced cost. Though due to the speciality of their technologies, a large portion of components are sourced from single-source suppliers, necessitating ongoing efforts towards a multi-source volume purchasing strategy in order to reduce reliance on sole-source suppliers. When it comes to the less tangible aspect of community building, NEO devotes a similar amount of attention as it does to engineering and production capabilities. In fact, community building is a primary factor that helps with differentiation and essentially acts as an enhanced form of conventional marketing and retention strategies, starting with NEO houses and NEO spaces, which are intended for reaching out to and serving users, as well as being the offline platforms for the NEO user community. Neo houses combine aspects from showrooms with those of a clubhouse, creating places where Neo users can get together and bond over the common link of being a part of the ecosystem. There are well over 100 Neo houses located around the world. Users can even bring friends and family to deepen the experience, which simultaneously broadens the pool of potential customers that get to experience Neo. Neo spaces, on the other hand, are mainly showrooms to display vehicles and services. They are also generally smaller and are more sales focused. There are in excess of 300 NEO spaces globally. Now returning back to the NEO app, which goes far beyond tasks related to charging. It also lets users place orders for vehicles and configure their vehicles. It allows for access to a range of services related to things like vehicle control and power, as well as being an online platform for the user community, which helps to receive customer feedback as much as it does to foster brand loyalty. When vehicles are delivered to customers, it is meant to be a full-service support package with pre-delivery inspection services, assistance with vehicle inspection, guidance and orientation on vehicle features, and assistance with vehicle registration and insurance processing. Services related to repair, maintenance, and bodywork services can be done through NEO's own service centers and authorized third-party service. Service plans are offered on an annual fee basis in certain regions. They have insurance that covers statutory third-party liability and vehicle damage insurance, which are provided through third-party insurers. Then there is also vehicle repair and maintenance services, courtesy vehicles, roadside assistances, optional value-added services, and enhanced data packages. Service even extends to charging with Service Mobile, their service centers on wheels, all of which can be arranged using the NEO app. The NEO app also helps facilitate the online store for their lifestyle brand NEO Life, which carries products in categories like clothing and accessories, home and living, consumer electronics, food and beverages, with reports indicating sales of at least over 13 million items. So you can see how electric cars essentially become an anchor point for users to gather around, which in turn fosters more engagement to reinforce the relationship with existing customers and provide indirect marketing for new potential customers. This approach does have logic behind it given the enthusiast nature behind vehicles, especially premium vehicles. The other element at work is in a sense similar to how big tech companies keep engaging users through similar online and offline channels. On top of that, the annual gathering on Neo Day serves to bolster a fan-like following that takes a page from entertainment expos and conventions. Neo Day can be described as an event to showcase new products and technologies, along with being another point of contact for users to engage with the company and each other. 
Another facet of the ecosystem involves a sort of gamification through Neo points. They are meant to encourage user engagement and positive user behavior, such as to keep a safe driving record. Neo points are earned through welcome packages when buying a new EV, as well as other activities like referrals for test drives and vehicle purchases, and active engagement in the user community. Neo points connect back to other parts of the ecosystem since they can be used on the online store and at Neo houses and some Neo spaces. Then, since this company deals with EVs, it is quite fitting they created Neo Certified, which can contribute to reducing waste and making their EVs more accessible. Neo Certified facilitates the secondary market by acting as a used vehicle service for Neo vehicles. Used vehicle inspection, evaluation, acquisition, and sales can take place in areas where the capabilities are established. Reach is extended by partnerships with used car dealers on the Neo app. On a similar topic, Neo vehicles can be obtained through subscription and leasing, which first rolled out in Germany, the Netherlands, Denmark, and Sweden during 2022. Beyond just having sufficient customers, the success of this segment rests on the smooth operation of car leasing partners, which includes keeping vehicles safe from theft and damage. By building up all these services and infrastructure around their vehicles, along with continuing constant and unique customer engagement, Neo aims to keep carving out their place in the EV industry an industry that is expected to have competition heat up with the rising popularity of moving away from the combustion engine. NEO states the most important factors for competing are pricing, technological innovation, product design and performance, product quality and safety, service and charging options, user experience, and manufacturing efficiency. They go on to assert their competitive advantages are well-positioned products, proprietary software and hardware technological advances, and battery swapping as well as the intangible aspect of the overall experience. In particular, price competition in China is noteworthy under circumstances where competitors are able to make deliveries earlier than expected or offer lower pricing to reduce NEO's domestic advantage of being first to market and a high-volume manufacturer, as is the phase-out of government subsidies that can affect the broader Chinese EV industry. Favorable government incentives and subsidies in China such as one-time government subsidies, exemption from vehicle purchase tax, exemption from license plate restrictions in certain cities, and preferential utility rates for charging facilities are all examples of policies that could affect the EV industry if phased out. Other risks to NEO and the EV industry relating to changes in Chinese government policy revolve around alterations to how foreign EV companies are treated, specifically around tariffs, because in 2018, the tariff on imported passenger vehicles other than those originating in the United States of America, was reduced to 15%, leading to the lessening of a pricing advantage for domestically manufactured vehicles. Similarly, in the same year, previous limitations on foreign ownership of automakers in China were removed for automakers of NEVs. Later in 2021, changes to the special administrative measures, negative list for foreign investment access, the limit on foreign ownership of automakers for ICE passenger vehicles was also lifted. As a result, foreign NEV competitors could build wholly owned facilities in China without the need for a domestic joint venture partner, further eroding domestic EV automaker advantages. On the other hand, protectionist policies in markets outside of China can impede global expansion plans. NEO cites examples such as the European Commission in 2023, which began an investigation on the possibility of punitive tariffs to protect European Union producers against lower-priced Chinese electric vehicle imports, it says, are benefiting from state subsidies. Though even if those kinds of measures didn't exist, there is always some disadvantage in international expansions, since local brands have greater awareness and understand their domestic market better. Requiring outsiders like NEO to devote significant resources to establish a foothold with investments in areas like marketing. Moving ahead, the company plans to target a broader market and periodically perform facelifts or refresh existing models. This opens up the potential to reach a larger customer base and keep existing ones satisfied. However, it will be crucial to not be too aggressive because vehicle launch delays are cited as the primary risk in this aspect of the growth strategy. Delays have potential to emerge at all stages from design and testing, to difficulties with scaling new production techniques, and setbacks in the supply chain. The journey ahead will no doubt be an exciting one given the combination of risk and innovation in the EV industry. For more coverage of electric vehicles, power solutions, and other types of companies, please follow Ascencore and browse the videos on other companies like First Solar while you wait for the next video coming very soon. Thanks for coming along the journey and enjoy the ride.